Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Originally, when I came to New York, I lived alone in a boarding house. It wasn't bad, but before long, I was talking to myself. Right then and there, I decided to find a roommate. That's how I happened to be living with Irma Peterson. Now I have someone to talk to. You know the conversation made more sense when I was talking to myself? <laughs> For instance, a few minutes ago, I said, Irma, you know, I don't think those wall brackets give us enough light. Why don't we buy a bridge lamp? And Irma said... A bridge lamp? But, Jane, what if we want to play gin rummy? <laughs> These things I never answer. I just pretend I'm back in the boarding house living alone. Or to steady my nerves, I pick up a newspaper and read. Jane? Yes, Irma? What are you doing with a newspaper? <laughs> Reading? Yes, honey. What are you reading? Hmm? Oh, it's just an article on psychology as applied to marriage. Well, it must be wonderful. Psychology? No, marriage. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? Well, it's just a series of questions designed to see if a girl and the man of her choice are suited for each other. Well, isn't that unusual? No, why should it be? Well, when Al and I sit on the sofa, he never asks me any questions, and we get along fine. <laughs> Well, honey, you know, there's more to it than that. This article approaches the problem of compatibility with scientific introspection. Oh, that's nice. What did I say, Irma? Uh, something about an inspection, but I didn't get it. <laughs> well, let's just forget the whole thing, oh, huh? Oh, Jane, please, please read me some of the questions, because I've been very worried about how Al and I will get along after we're married. Oh, Irma, are you still thinking seriously of marrying that unemployed moocher? Oh, what can I do, Jane? I love him. Ever since I've known him, I've been in a trance. Oh, come now. You haven't known him that long. <laughs> I mean, well, honey, you know, if you're really worried about how the two of you will get along, why don't you try this test on yourself? Oh, I want to, Jane. Please read it to me. All right, sweetie. Now, let me see. Um, does the man you intend to marry keep appointments? Is he punctual? Punctual? Why, Al is in line for his unemployment check even before the office is open. <laughs> Mark down one. One? Yeah, now. Is he the type of man you would ever be ashamed to be seen with? No, because we never go anyplace. <laughs> no, no, honey, if you want to take this test, now, you've got to be honest with yourself. Now, what do your friends think of Al? What do I care? I can get new friends. <laughs> well, you better give yourself a zero on that one. Gee, this is just like school. I'm getting zeros again. <laughs> uh, what's the next question, Jane? Uh, do the two of you like to participate in sports? Well, I like swimming and tennis. Yeah, and what about Al? Jane, is tilting pinball machines a sport? <laughs> well, if they catch you, yes, then you may have to sprint up a few alleys. Irma, so far, you see you and Al have very little in common, psychologically speaking. Well, there must be something that attracted us to each other. Well, I know what attracted Al to you. What? You've got a job. Look, now, Irma, just prove it to yourself. Now, answer the questions they have here, honey. Do you like dancing? Yes. Does your boyfriend? No. Do you like to go to the theater? Yes. Does your boyfriend? Only when he has a pass. <laughs> well, according to this psychological test, the two of you just don't click. Maybe you're right, Jane. Lately, I, I've been having my doubts, too. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Well, Al will be here any minute, and I'm going to give him one more chance. Either he will change, or this is the end. Well, that's up to you, honey. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. 
Well, I've got to run along, kid. Hey, hold it, Jane. You mean you don't even want to hear about my new deal? Can't wait. <laughs> you will love this. It's a racing form printed on a large cookie. So after a day at the track, you still got something to eat. <laughs> Sounds good, huh? Irma, I can only say if you find you have anything in common with this man, get rid of it. <laughs> Snooty day. She ain't ever going to amount to anything. Al, I would like to go to the theater tonight. Will you please take me? Chicken, why this sudden request? Al, it's very important for us. You see, you and I are psychological cases. <laughs> what are you talking about, Chicken? Al, please take me to the theater. Well, Chicken, why can't we just sit here on the sofa and discuss world politics? Al, I insist you take me to the theater. But, honey, I haven't got a pass. They got a big doorman. And to clinch it, they're painting the fire escape. <laughs> our way in. Hey, chicken, you are tampering with my principles. <laughs> There's no use, Al. We have nothing in common. We might as well face it. You and I need a scientific inspection. <laughs> what? We're not combustible. <laughs> Don't you mean compatible? What's the difference what I mean? We're just not meant for each other. Chicken, you mean that? Yes, Al. Let us just consider this experience an interlude, a motel on the highway of life. <laughs> Chicken, you're nuts. That's beside the point. <laughs> this is the end, and I think we should break completely. Well, Chicken, I don't know what to say. But if you think you'll find more happiness with another, here's your ring back. Thanks, Al. And here's a pawn ticket for the one you promised me. Maybe you'll change your mind someday. Well, goodbye, Irma. You're a swell kid. I won't ever forget you. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Honey, I just passed Al in the hall and... He... Oh, honey, you're crying. Don't feel sad, sweetie. I can't help it, Jane. I always feel sad when I'm crying. <laughs> now, listen, Irma, the worst is over. Now, you must try to forget it. Believe me, it's for the best. I know you're right, Jane, but I never had a man walk out on me before. That's silly. He didn't walk out on you. You walked out on him. How can you say that? I'm still here. <laughs> Oh, now, look, honey, don't carry on. So, you know, you're really in an enviable position. You have the whole world before you. You're footloose and fancy free. Footloose and fancy free? Sure. Now, come on, you dry those tears and let's have a smile. Come on. Come on, now, let me hear you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. That's more like it, honey. Be gay. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little jigsaw puzzles. One complete and one a few pieces are missing. <laughs> Why, Professor? Excuse me, a little joke I picked up in a toy store. <laughs> What's new, Irma? <laughs> What's this? Professor, I'm footloose and fancy, and it's free. <laughs> Irma! Oh, Professor, Al and Irma have parted, and, and she's trying to be gay. Oh, so it finally happened. I knew it would someday, but don't feel too badly, Irma. Oh, I remember when I broke up with that nagging wife of mine. She went out and found somebody else. Did the new fellow make her happy? No, he made me happy. He beat her up every day. <laughs> Professor. It's only a little kidding to cheer Irma up. Irma, my little bit of honey, you've got to learn to face the unpleasant things of life, too. Take that room I live in upstairs. It's full of bats and mice and rats. And the rain comes through the roof. But do I take a gloomy view? No. Where else can a man go hunting and swimming without getting out of bed? <laughs> 
I'll miss Al. Now, look, Emma, before I go, I want you to remember an old saying. A stitch in time will save nine. Well, how does that apply to me? It don't. This is a slogan for tailors. <laughs> but there's a very old saying I like. It takes a heap of living to make a home. Well? Well, I think I'll go up to my home and clean out that heap so I can live in it. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, Jane, I made a mistake. I'll never find another man like Al. Now, you made a decision, Irma. Don't be a weakling. Guess you're right, Jane. I I'm just going to look around for someone else. Good. Who can that be? Maybe it's Al coming back. Come in. Hello, dearie. Oh, Amber Lipscott. What a surprise. Uh, you remember my roommate, Jane. Yeah. You mind if I take my shoes off, Emma? My feet are killing me. <laughs> if you don't mind, I think I'll leave. What's the matter, dearie? Ain't you never seen feet before? <laughs> Yeah, but not in such quantities. <laughs> I'll see you later, honey. Gee, <laughs> ain't it wonderful the way we hate each other? <laughs> but that's not important. You know why I rushed over, dearie? Look. Oh, Amber, an engagement ring. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen carat gold. Oh, Amber, what a beautiful setting. Yeah. Next year I get the stone. <laughs> Amber, I, I wish you all the happiness in the world. <laughs> Why are you crying, dearie? Well, you're engaged, and, and Al and I just broke up. So what? This town is crummy with guys. <laughs> Look, Irma, if you want a fella, do like I did. Right to the Lonely Hearts Club. Lonely Hearts Club? Sure, they got stuff lying all over the place. <laughs> And it's perfectly confidential. They give you a number. And if you're lucky like me, they don't ask for a picture. Oh, you mean I could get a number if I wrote to them? That's right, dearie. Nobody uses a name. Look, say, uh, say you're number 12. Then the fella might be number 34. And all mail goes right to a box, so we don't even know where you live. And vice versa. Gee, do you think I ought to try? Dearie, don't waste no time. Inflation is coming. You don't know what you'll get. <laughs> Just do like I say, huh? All right, Amber. I'll do anything to meet some new fellow. Oh, uh, you can't miss, dearie. And wouldn't it be wonderful if my husband and I ran into Al someday and I could say, Al, congratulate me. I'm Mrs. 94. <laughs> Hey, ladies, would you like to have a luxurious mink coat? Well, then, find out about the exciting Lieber Brothers $100,000 fur contest. Hello? Oh, hello, Dottie. Say, listen, how would you like to have a real mink coat? No, I'm not kidding. You really can get one by winning one of the Lieber Brothers fur contests. Well, all you do is tell why you like swan soap, Lux flakes, Lux toilet soap, life, boy, rinse, or spry. How long will the contest last? Well, there's going to be one each week for five weeks, and we can enter as many times as we want to. Well, I have to dash. Turn on your radio right now, and you'll hear more about it. Bye. There are 1,645 prizes in all, 329 each week in this $100,000 contest. Each week, the following prizes will be awarded. One gorgeous $3,000 mink coat, three $1,000 fur coats, five smart $500 fur jackets, as well as many other prizes of valuable furs and cash. And ladies, you may choose your own coat at your favorite store when you win, or you can have the cash. Now, here are the rules. In 25 words or less, tell why you like any of these six lever products. Swan soap, Lux, Lux toilet soap, Life Boy, Rinso, or Spry. And close a wrapper or box top from one of them. Print your name and address, and the name and address of your dealer. He'll help you. Also, be sure to get your entry blank from him. It will give you all the information you need. Mail your entries to Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. Be sure to get your entry blank from your dealer tomorrow. That address, Lever Brothers Company Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. You may win a luxurious fur coat or cash. 
So start writing your letters tonight. Well, Irma has enrolled in the Lonely Hearts Club. I don't know why she did it, but I suppose if it was good enough for Amber Lipscott, it's good enough for Irma. So already she has a number, 75. Irma's kind of worried about her number. She's afraid if she signs her letter 75, she won't get a man under 80. <laughs> so I explained that the number has no personal significance, and right now Irma's writing her first letter to the club. It'll be forwarded to some unknown man. Dear to whom it may concern... I am a lonely girl. My heart is broken. I have blonde hair and blue eyes and nice legs and would like to meet a man in the same condition. <laughs> no, no, sweetie. No. What's wrong? Well, you, you, uh, you put all your eggs in that basket, but they're scrambled. <laughs> you, you better let me help you, sweetie. All right, Jane. Good. Um... Dear sir, I am 22 years old, blonde, considered attractive, and I'm quite lonely. I should like very much to make the acquaintance of a gentleman who is also lonely. Now, sign it. With best wishes and all my love, 75. P.S. This has nothing to do with my age. No. <laughs> no, sweetie, ju just sign it sincerely, number 75, huh? All right, Jane. Uh, do you think I should spray a little perfume on it? You know the bottle Al gave me? Irma, I have smelled that perfume. <laughs> it will not only keep men away, but also mosquitoes. <laughs> no, honey, you, you just mail as it, as it is. All right, Jane. <laughs> Hello, girls. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. This letter just came for you, Irma. I didn't mean to peek, but it says Lonely Hearts Club on the envelope. Oh, it's here. But, Irma, I don't understand. What about you and Al? Uh, they broke up. Oh, well, Irma, darling, don't feel too badly. Yeah. Go on, honey, go on. Read the letter from the Lonely Hearts Club. I'm just dying of curiosity. Go on. All right. My dear Miss 75, in answer to your letter, I, too, am lonely... What can we do about it? Signed, 33322. Oh, Jane, that's a wonderful number. What do you mean, wonderful? Well, we'll have a big family. I don't follow you, sweetie. Well, in poker, three threes and a pair of twos is a full house. <laughs> I know, Irma, but don't go jump into conclusions. You don't even know this man. Oh, Miss O'Reilly, I'm so excited. Imagine getting an answer so quickly. It's only me again. <laughs> Hello, girls. Why do you all look so happy? Irma has a new boyfriend. Wonderful, Irma. What's his name? Uh, 33322. Two. Irma, a convict. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. Go back to Al. At least he wasn't caught yet. <laughs> no, no, Professor. Irma's been corresponding through the Lonely Hearts Club, and everyone has a number. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Irma. And take the advice of an old man. Find out what the man is like right away before you get involved. Oh, I'm going to. But first of all, I'm going to find out one thing. If he has a job. You know what I just went through with my ex? Your ex? <laughs> yes. I want to even forget his name. Of course, my ex was very sweet to me. And my ex made me happy. And I loved my ex. And I dreamed of that day I would... Marry my ex. <laughs> Irma, you're slipping. Now remember. Oh, yes, I must be gay. Ha, 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 ha. Now, honey, there's no time to waste. Come on, let's answer the letter. All right. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. They want to be alone. Let's you and I run around the block. Oh, that's silly. Who's going to run around the block? You are. You'll ask me for the rent, and when I give you my answer, I guarantee you'll chase me around the block. <laughs> So let's start now. Goodbye and good luck, Elma. All right, honey, let's get started with your letter. Well, Irma has finished her letter, and I'm proofreading it for her. It says, Dear 33322, Do you mind if I call you Dear 32? I feel I know you well enough to call you by your initials. <laughs> 
I was thrilled to get your letter, and I hope you turn out the way I picture you. Of course, your writing is very small. Are you short? <laughs> I hope not, because I'm considered the right height for five feet four. I wouldn't want anyone shorter than five feet four and a half because I want someone I can look up to. <laughs> what else is new? Have you got a job? I have, and hoping to hear the same from you, I remain affectionately 75. Yes, sir. What can the Lonely Hearts Club do for you? Well, my name is Al. My number is 33322. <laughs> I'm corresponding with a girl numbered 75. Any mail for me? i look in the box. Oh, yes. Here's a letter for you, 33322. By the way, how are you getting along with your correspondence? Well, frankly, the dame seems a little cracked. <laughs> but I'm so anxious to get over this lump in my heart. You know, the girl I love jilted me that I'll, I'll try anything. Oh, here you are. Good luck. Well, for the past three days, I've been hearing nothing but 33322 and 75 until it's just coming out of my ears. You know, if those two ever get together, I think they'll have to be married by a bookkeeper. But of course, since the letter that Irma's expecting today should contain valuable information about her new phantom boyfriend, I was just as excited as she was when she said, Jane, Jane, the letter, it came. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Come on, honey, read it. No, you read it to me. I I'm too excited. All right, I will. Dear 75, thank you for your letter. I was hoping the girl I was corresponding with was a Vassar graduate, but it seems quite impossible since I noticed you spelled considered with a K. <laughs> However, none of us is perfect. <laughs> he spells perfect, P-E-R-F-E-K. Oh, go on, Jane. All right. You ask me, have I got a job? Well, 75, as number to number, let me inform you that I have worked hard and steadily all my life as head of a big steel corporation, and now I'm prepared to retire. How are you fixed financially? <laughs> I am perfectly healthy, tall, and so handsome it's disgusting. <laughs> Yours devotedly, 33322. Well, what do you think, Jane? I don't know, sweetie. This is either a genius or a crackpot. But anyone should be an improvement over Al. I beg your pardon, your ex. Shall I answer him? You know, I think it's about time you met him. All right, Jane, I I'll write him to come up here. No, no, honey, not for two reasons. First, if you don't like him, you know, after you've met him, we don't want him hanging around here. And secondly, we want to make a good impression on him. Well, how do I go about that? Yeah. Well, Richard and I are having dinner at the Papio Club tomorrow night. He can be our guest. But uh, how will he recognize me? Well, uh, write that you'll wear a green hat. But what if someone else is wearing a green hat? He's liable to marry the wrong girl. Yeah. Well, tell him that you'll leave your number with the head waiter and Henri will bring it to our table. All right, Jane, I'll, I'll sit down and write him a letter right away. Yeah, honey, and, and listen, in your letter, try to make yourself attractive. Show an interest in what he's doing. Well, if he's in the steel business, what can I say? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know, uh, say, um, well, say that you realize that, uh, uh, steel is the backbone of this country and that you're fascinated by blast furnaces. And trust he finds you interesting. I got it. Now, what are you going to write? Um, it must be interesting to steal blast furnaces. <laughs> uh, I trust you will like me because I have one of the nicest backbones in the country. <laughs> hold it, honey. Just, just hold it. Just invite him to dinner at the Papillon Club. <laughs> Papio Club, Richard, myself, and number 75. We're waiting for 33322. I must say, 75 looks adorable. She's wearing a green hat. She's taking no chances. On it is a 75. <laughs> she 
You took a label from a can of Heinz beans that said 57 and reversed the numbers. <laughs> and since this dinner is costing Richard a pretty penny, I, too, am very curious to see what Irma's landed. Honey, Irma, smile. Come on, look happy. Uh, I'm sorry, Jane. I was just thinking. About Al? Now, Irma, what did you promise? Ha, 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 ha. It's better. <laughs> Irma, you say this Mr. 33322 is in the steel business? Yes. Well, then I must know him. Oh, I'm sure you do. Well, it's going to be wonderful to have dinner with an old friend. Oh, <laughs> sure. You know, every time we've been out together, I'd look across the table, and who would I see? Ow! Chicken, you're wearing a green hat. And you're wearing a carnation. Seventy-five. Al, you're not. Three, 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 two, two. Well, I sure am. <laughs> what a roundabout way to get a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al. Al, I'm so glad to see you. Me too, chicken. Now, just a minute, Al. You have your nerve working steady, a steel magnet. I, I don't even know what I wrote. I didn't even know it was Irma. All I know is I was going crazy for missing her. Lots of guys turned to drink. I turned to the Lonely Hearts Club. Oh, well, it's all my fault in that psychological test. Ah, what's the difference, chicken? Just wanted you to know I love you and I always will. And now, Jane, if you want me to go, I'll go. Sit down, Al. <laughs> Sit down and order. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. No wonder you ate half my platter while you were talking. <laughs> Ladies, now with Swan Soap, you can get the kind of complexion care you've been dreaming of. Sure, because Swan's exclusive super creamed blend gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather. A rich, mild beauty lather that cleanses so gently and rinses away so completely, your skin is left fresh, smooth, and lovely as ever. So for perfect complexion care, make your regular facial soap super creamed Swan Soap. <laughs> back together on the sofa, and they're as much in love as ever. They're making gooey talk. He says, How's my darling little 75? Oh, just fine, my great big 33322. And if that isn't nauseating enough, Irma is now making with more numbers. Uh, 14. No, I don't like that. Uh, 32. Yes, 32 and 33. Irma, I know Al is 33322 and you're 75. What are those other numbers? Oh, I'm just picking out names for the children. <laughs> well, with language like that, what can I say but 23 skidoo to my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Frank Bingman speaking. You bet there's a reason why Spry is the cake-making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the sure spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has spry's cake improver secret. For new cake making success, rely on spry. Pure all vegetable spry with cake improver. Rely on spry. S P R Y. Rely on spry. S P R Y. Next week, one hour earlier, and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>